Welcome back, guys. It's me, your AOCPM and our fellowship chair, Dr. Bruno Subarau, not just a physiatrist, but a PM and artist. And I'm here to help you guys become a PM and our superstar, so let's get to work on case number 11. A 42 year old female patient arrives at your inpatient rehabilitation hospital after suffering a TBI. She reports severe dehydration. Upon reviewing her labs, you notice a decreased serum sodium, a decreased serum osmolality, and a normal urine osmolality. You would expect her ADH to be either an appropriately elevated, appropriately elevated, decreased, or normal. So electrolyte abnormalities are extremely common after a TBI, and common things are, well, commonly tested. So when you see a sodium abnormality, you have to consider three different etiologies. Number one, syndrome of inappropriate ADH release. Number two, cerebral salt wasting. Or number three, diabetes insipidus. But to be able to tell these three apart, you have to know something first. What the heck is osmolality? So osmolality simply is the number of dissolved particles in a fluid. Now here we see a ratio of five sodium particles dissolved in five units of fluid. Now from our question, our patient had a decreased serum osmolality. Well, there's two ways to get that. Number one, you can increase the amount of fluid, which is the case in SIADH, where your body won't let you diurese, and thus the fluid increases. Or number two, you decrease the amount of dissolved particles. And this is the case in cerebral salt wasting, where your body is actually losing all of its sodium through the urine. So going back to the question, we can see that both cerebral salt wasting and SIADH will give you a decreased serum sodium and a decreased serum osmolality, but only one is going to give you a normal urine osmolality. So let's look at the difference then. So in SIADH, you're retaining fluid. This is what your urine's going to look like. You're not peeing out your fluid. So your urine osmolality is obviously going to be extremely elevated. However, in cerebral salt wasting, you're going to have appropriate release of your ADH because you're in a hypovolemic and dehydrated state. Why? When you pee, you're losing a lot of your sodium, but at the same time, you're taking fluid through osmosis, which means your urine osmolality will be normal. That's the key difference. Returning to the question, we see that only one etiology is going to give us these findings, and that's cerebral salt wasting. Therefore, ADH should be appropriately elevated. So to quickly summarize, in SIADH, your urine osmolality will be sky high. Remember, you will be retaining water, which is why you fluid restrict them to one liter per day, unless there's severe symptoms like seizures or confusion, in which case you'll infuse hypertonic saline, but at a slow rate to avoid central pontine myelinolysis. Cerebral salt wasting will leave a patient hypovolemic with obvious signs of dehydration. The ADH levels, however, will be appropriately elevated, and the treatment, conversely, is hydration with correction of the sodium. So lastly, I'd like to touch upon diabetes insipidus, which was part of our differential. However, this is the opposite of SIADH and cerebral salt wasting, where you're going to see decreased ADH levels as the hallmark and possibly elevated serum sodium. The treatment is going to be with DDAVP. So what is DDAVP? Well, it's basically just an analog of ADH, which has decreased in diabetes insipidus. If you end up putting the two together, DI and DDAVP, you see it spells did Dave P. Did Dave P? Find out the answer to this and more next episode, but seriously, thank you guys. Uh, for sticking with me through this difficult topic. I'll see you guys next time. Visit us on Facebook and like our page and visit us at www.aocpmnr.org. Until next time, guys.